As we launch into our message, I have a direct and difficult question for those of you in the room who call yourself a Christian and a Christ follower, like one that's gonna make you squirm. But before I wanna get to that, I wanna make sure that if you don't find yourself in that group, we're really glad that you're here at Students Groups because you're in the right place to find out more about who Jesus is and truly wrestle to see if the life that Jesus offers you is the right one. In a lot of ways, you're gonna maybe have a little bit of a pass tonight. You get to kind of look in, but let me tell you, even though you have that pass, I still firmly believe that following Jesus is the best way to live life. And so without further ado, let's get to this question. Does your life look like Jesus? Or another way to say it, has Jesus left Mark? Now, I'm not talking about wearing robes and walking around in sandals, but does your character, your life, who you are, look like Jesus? Is your life now that you follow Jesus different from your life before you follow Jesus? Is who you say you are and how you are living matching up and also matching up to what we find in the Bible? I mean, I'm not kidding, this is a difficult question and probably one of the most important ones for you to answer once you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And if you're answering that you don't feel like your life looks like Jesus and Jesus hasn't really left a mark on your life, let me tell you, you're right there with me because when I was in middle school and much of high school, that was where I found myself. Now to give some backstory, I'm someone who grew up in church. My family attended regularly and I was super involved in the kids ministry at our church. There was rarely a week that I missed. And this led me to knowing a lot of the Bible stories really, really well. But going into middle school, while I did attend our student ministry regularly and I showed up, there was a disconnect for me in the way that I lived. And even though I would be able to say all the right answers and knew all the right things to say, I was not living the life of a Christian because my life looked nothing like the life of Jesus. I was constantly striving to find my approval in others and find my value and worth in dating relationships and so many other things. I was looking some stuff that really wasn't honoring other people or God. And I did hang with other Christians, but I was a completely different person when I was with my church friends versus my school friends. I would constantly change who I was to do whatever it took to look good in front of others. And even though I knew what the Bible said, I really wasn't living or obeying it. And this all built up to a point where I was extremely convicted during a night at summer camp after my freshman year of high school. And I don't remember exactly what the communicator said that night, but I do know that there was this gut level feeling of realizing that the life that I said I lived as a Christian and the life that I truly was living were two very different things. And so during small group time that night, it just kind of all broke. This pressure built up and I realized I couldn't fake it anymore. And I'm not just talking about like just this little break. I'm not talking about just a couple tears. I'm talking about full on uncontrollable crying with snot just bubbling out of my nose that continued on way past the scheduled small group time. And it was at this moment that I realized I couldn't stay the same. I couldn't allow myself to say I was living one way and then live a different way. I needed my life to be marked by Jesus. And I needed to live the life of a Jesus follower to begin not only knowing the Bible, but obeying it. And so let me ask you again, does your life look like Jesus? Has Jesus left a mark? Does your life before discovering Jesus and now after accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior look different? Would your school friends know that you follow Jesus or do you live differently when you're at church versus at school? Are you living in a way that others can see that you live differently? Today, we're wrapping up this series called Marked where we're talking about exactly that. If you're someone who follows Jesus, you're called to live a life marked by Jesus. God calls us to be ambassadors of Jesus here on this earth, meaning that our lives are supposed to be seen and heard and not hidden. And we are marked by the life of Jesus because he has so radically changed us. And we can't help but do as he did and live Mark lives in return. In our first week, Chase talked about how that all begins with taking a look at our inner life. If our outer life is going to be different, we need to begin to change how we think and how we believe to then allow us to flow into our actions and how we live. Another way that Chase said this is our inner lives need to be marked first to then allow our outer lives to be marked. 
And then Aiden followed it up last week talking about the unconditional love of Jesus and how that love once again changes us from the inside and compels us to live a life marked by love on the outside, which brings us to today as we talk about how Jesus followers should have Jesus mark our lives through what the Bible calls the fruit of your life. It's about what you produce or bring forth in the world through your behaviors, attitudes, and contributions. Essentially, it's the impact that you have on your surroundings, your relationship, and personal growth. The concept of fruit is talked about in several places in the Bible, but today we're going to camp in Galatians chapter 5. So go ahead and grab your Bible, open your Bible or Bible apps as we dive in together. And in this letter called Galatians, Paul is writing to the church in modern day Turkey, where Paul is talking to this community that is marked by something other than Jesus. They are finding that their past is influencing their lives way more than Jesus is, and they're struggling to find the true freedom offered in Jesus begins in verse 19. It says, it is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness, trinket gods, magic show religions, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, all consuming yet never satisfied once, a brutal temper and impotence to love or be loved, divided homes and divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of depersonalize everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions and ugly parodies of community. I could go on. Wow. I mean, what a list that Paul writes. I mean, this is not what I would want my life to be marked by. But here's the thing. Paul knows that if we choose to go our own way, if we choose to give into the flesh, this is what our life will become. This will be the fruit of our life. Here's the thing. What happens when we begin to live God's way? He begins to bring good gifts into our life, much the same way that fruit appears in the orchard. And that fruit the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd love my life to be defined by those things. And Paul helps them begin to see that there's this battle going on between the flesh, otherwise known as our sinful nature desires, and the spirit, the desires that come from God. Now, two notes really quick. One, neither list here is meant to be this exhaustive list. Paul is just simply listing out what some of the fruits of the spirit and some of the fruits of the flesh are. And I think it's something that's really helpful for us to know that this just gives us a little bit of a picture. There's other things that could still be true here. And two, these lists are what happen to us when we choose to live by the flesh or by the spirit over time. This isn't just something you fall into by screwing up once. God's grace is still there for you. This is all about decision after decision and the direction of your life over time. So as you begin to hear those two lists of fruit, which one describes your life better? Which list marks your life more? And we're going to talk about this more during group, but I think you really need to begin to identify, is your life marked by the fruits of the flesh or by the fruits of the spirit? Because going back to my story from earlier, that night at summer camp, I realized that my life was marked by the fruits of the flesh, not the fruits of the spirit. I chose to go my own way, to give into my selfish, sinful desires, way more than allowing Jesus to mark my life. The music and shows that I consumed were not helping point me to have good fruit. The relationships and the desire that I pursued were leaving me marked by the fruits of the flesh. And the person who I was outside of the church was hollow and empty compared to who Jesus wanted me to be. And here's the thing, this wasn't all bad, but it also wasn't what it needed to be. So how do we begin to change that in our lives? How do we begin to allow our lives to be marked by good fruit instead of the fruit of the flesh? Paul shares this as we continue in this passage. He says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and the desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the spirit, let us follow the spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Or in another translation, talks about staying in step with the Spirit. 
If we truly want our lives to produce good fruit, we're gonna have to surrender those passions and desires to Jesus and begin to stay in step with the Spirit. To live a life marked by good fruit, we need to live a life marked by the Spirit. I know it's very easy for us to choose Jesus for part of our lives, but I think it's really important to see that being marked by good fruit as being something that requires you to give your whole life to Jesus, even the part of your life that you may want to hold on to. It's going to require you to live in such a way that people can see that you're marked by Jesus. And it's going to take more than a momentary decision to get baptized at Easter or maybe having a really impactful moment at Winter Summit or Summer Camp for you to have good fruit in your life. See, it takes the everyday decisions over time to allow this fruit to begin to show up in our lives. It's not something we can rush. It's something that we have to be intentional about. So as we close today, what do you need to change in your life to allow your life to be marked by Jesus more than your own desires? Which fruits do you need to lean into the Spirit to help Holy Spirit develop in your life? Because to live a life marked by good fruit, we must live a life marked by the Spirit.